Do you play Genshin and really want to get into Wuthering Waves, but your brain is so accustomed to Genshin terminology that you don't understand what is what? Well, then this is the guide for you. Before we begin, let's go through the name of different currencies and materials just so that you have an idea of what I'm talking about. If you already know the names and terminologies for most of these items, then you can skip to this timestamp. Alright, so firstly, primogems are called Asterites, and then you have Genesis Crystals, those are called Lunite, a Quaint Fate, is Lustrous Tide, Intertwined Fates are Radiant Tides. You then have a separate currency, which you get with Asterites. They are basically like Intertwined Fates, specifically for weapons, which are Forging Tides. Mora is called Shell Credits, Heroes Wit, Resonance Potion, Enhancement Ore, Energy Core, Oculus, Sonance Crystal. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Stardust is Oscillate Coral. Star Glitter is Afterglow. Resin is Wave Plates. Fragile Resin is called Crystal Solvent. On top of that, there are extra things like the Battle Pass is called Pioneer Podcast, but you'll probably catch on to that pretty quickly. All right, now that you have a basic understanding on what things are called, let's begin. The Garcha System. Ah, we love it, we hate it. First up, we have the Beginner Banner, and just like Genshin's, 10 pools are 20% off. So 10 pools will only cost you 8. However, instead of getting a Noel here, you will get any one of the standard 4 star characters or weapons. Once you reach 50 pools, you are guaranteed to get a random standard banner 5 star character. If you've played Honkai Star Rail before, it's pretty much the same as that. Next is the beginner choice banner. After you've gotten your 5 star on the beginner banner, you unlock a new banner. This banner lets you choose any standard 5 star character and you will get them, guaranteed after 80 pulls, which is pretty awesome. Moving on to the standard banner, it's pretty much exactly the same as the standard banner in Genshin. Well, almost. Uh, every 5 star you get will be a 5 star character, not a weapon. Which leads us to our next banner, standard weapon banner. Yeah, a whole banner for standard weapons. Having these two separate is super helpful. That isn't all though, you can actually pick what standard weapon you want. So if you want like a sword, yeah, pick the sword. If you want the bow, pick the bow. There isn't bows in this game, why did I say bow? If you want the gun, <laughs> events character banner. It's almost exactly the same as Genshin's limited character banners, except the rates are slightly higher and the max pity is 80 instead of 90. You still have a 50-50 to win, your pity crosses over to other banners, and you get a guaranteed if you lose your 50-50. Nothing too new here. Event weapon banner. The weapon banner is not a scam. The event weapon banner is just 80 pulls and there is no 50-50. You just pull and you will get the weapon that you want. Guaranteed as 80 pools. I don't know if this will change in the future, but I sure hope it doesn't because it's just like buying a weapon, honestly. It is just a chance you could get it at a discounted price. It's it's awesome. And finally, we have the shop. Costs are pretty much the same as Genshin's. You can get what you'd usually expect in the shop. The only major difference I've noticed is you can buy standard and limited character constellations with the star glitter equivalent in this game, which we mentioned earlier was Afterglow, which I think is really cool. You can pull a character and then if you have enough Afterglow Coral, you can buy a wave band for them. It is expensive, it's like 270 Afterglow, which is a lot, but hey, it's an option and if you're pulling copies of a character, you know, you're gonna get quite a lot of that Coral over time and you will be able to get a few, I guess you could say quote unquote free ones with it. It's pretty awesome. Moving on to the Echoes. Echoes are the artifact equivalent in this game. They work similarly, but also very differently. You can have up to five Echoes on your character at a time. Each Echo has different costs. You can think of these costs as the type of Echo. For example, a cost one Echo is like your flower, maybe your feather. Cost three Echoes are like your sands or goblet, and cost four Echoes are like your circlet. The Echo selected in the first slot will give you an extra ability during combat. The effect will vary depending on the echo selected, some heal, some buff, and some just do a lot of damage. Later in the game when you start farming echoes, you'd usually want a 5 piece of the right bonus set for your specific character. Unfortunately, there isn't really off pieces in this game unless you're running a 2 piece 2 piece where that's kind of the only exception. So if you get a really cracked, you know, Maiden's Beloved equivalent in this game, you, it's not, it's really not useful. Unless you're on a two piece, two piece. Tessa fields are like artifact domains. You can complete them for echoes and cry when you get nothing good for the hundredth time. Please.
these. Havoc damage bonus on Havoc set. <gasps> okay, okay. Glacier. Yippee. You can actually farm Echoes passively in the open world, however. So if you've run out of all your wave plates, you can just go out, do some exploration, and just farm Echoes by killing monsters. I know for me, I love killing innocent animals for just hours and hours and collecting their aura and absorbing it. Anyways, characters. Playable characters are called resonators, and each resonator has something called an attribute, which is the game's equivalent to elements. Attributes are pretty easy to understand for the most part. The major differences is that they don't cause elemental reactions, but other than that, they're not that much different, at least to my knowledge. Moving on to the combat though, the combat in this game is incredible. Instead of a team of four, we have a team of three, which seems like a disadvantage, but honestly, Throughout playing, I haven't really noticed that. There's a lot of stuff in the combat that is very hard to compare to Genshin's as it feels very different and unique, and my goodness, is it a lot of fun. Characters have these cool attacks called intro and outro skills which take place when a character enters or leaves the field. They also have their E ability, which is their skill, and R ability, which is their burst. There's a lot of cool mechanics, for example, time briefly slows down if you dodge enemy attacks with perfect timing, you can stun enemies by using cool counterattacks, and overall it's just a really fun system that would take ages explaining, and honestly it just deserves its own video. I'm sure there's a lot of tutorials out there that explain the combat in more depth, but Overall, that's a very basic summary of it. I really enjoy this game's combat. It's addicting. The movement in this game is impeccable. You can run up walls, do backflips, and leap over ledges, or if you like the idea of digging your fingers into rock hard cliff sides, I guess you can do that too, but that might mean you're a psychopath. Oh, and let's not forget, you have a grapple hook. You can switch characters even when in mid-air or gliding. I don't know about you, but things like that are just such a nice quality of life feature that make exploring in the open world just so much nicer and more fluid. Hopefully by now you have a bit more of an understanding of the basic mechanics of this game, but obviously there's still a lot of unique features that I haven't fully delved into yet. It's got a vast open world with lots of treasures and materials to collect, as well as quests and lore to uncover. To be fair, I do think the early story is kinda eh, but give it time, it will get better. Do I think it's better than Genshin? Honestly, it depends who you are. I play both games alongside each other and they each have their pros and cons. Both games are enjoyable, and I highly recommend both of them if you want a new adventure. Wuthering Waves is its own game. Comparing it to Genshin is, I think, fair considering they are definitely competitors, but at the same time, both games are really fun. If you like both games, play both. If you like one over the other, play the one you prefer. And if you like neither of them, don't play either of them. <laughs> Hopefully this guide was useful, and if you think you have anything more to add or felt I missed something, let me know down in the comments. With all that said and done, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.